Uh, my name is Cullen Richard Buey. I did my PhD at Stanford um, in 2009, and I've been at MIT since early 2010. I'm in the Department of Mechanical Engineering as an assistant professor, and I work in the area of microfluidics, which is generally speaking the flow of fluid and particles where critical length scales are in the 10 micron range. So 10 microns is about one tenth the width of your of a human hair. So we deal with very small channels and very small particles. The Laboratory for Energy and Microsystems Innovations is uh, my lab which started when I joined MIT and it really encompasses all the things that, that have interested in me, interested me in research from alternative energy and alternative energy sources. Um, my training is in microscale fluid mechanics, um, so we're, a lot of our applications um, are dependent on things where microscale phenomena are critical. Um, and really, I, I consider myself an innovator. In a lot of ways, a lot of the applications that we look at are different twists on old things or combining two things together in, a, in an innovative way. And so we try to bring innovative solutions to problems in alternative energy um, and typically things that require microscale flow phenomena. In terms of applications, we, we look in two big areas related to microbiology and then also in material science. So with microbiology, um, the typical bacterial cell is on the order of one micron in diameter, and so this is perfect for microfluidic manipulation. One of the things we do, we look at using electric fields and fluid flow in order to discriminate or sort cells based on some physical property. So we're engineered, and so we're interested in physically what a cell will do. So in the case of, let's say, bacteria, we're interested in bacteria that cause infection. We found that we can design devices that will sort cells based on um, their ability to cause infection or form a biofilm. So that's the type of, type of thing that we do in the uh, microbiology area. But then also, we can use some similar principles in material science, mainly in building materials. So we use electric fields to assemble particles on surfaces and um, assemble particles on surfaces to change the properties of those surfaces. So we can make them water loving or water hating or super hydrophobic in, in other words. Um, and this is industrially relevant for many applications where you want to prevent biofouling or you would like to prevent or change a heat transfer property. So these are the types of things that we do with these very small microfluidic flows. One thing that we've done is called dielectrophoresis. So dielectrophoresis is a way of manipulating particles or cells based on their electrical properties. And so this field became very popular in the mid to late 90s when, um, with the kind of explosion of microfabrication. So when you could make very small channels and very small electrodes, um, having small electrodes allowed you to make high electric fields and high electric fields lended themselves to things like dielectrophoresis, which require higher electric fields. But previous implementations of this used um, very high electric fields and they used high frequencies. And so in dielectrophoresis, the frequency that you apply the electric field um, changes the, t the part of the cell that you're looking at. So for example, if you have a spherical cell, the cell has an outer envelope. And so when you apply a very high electric field, you actually short the outer envelope, and really the properties that you're testing are the internal properties of the cell. Whereas if you could use low frequency or direct current or constant electric fields, you would actually see what's happening on the outer surface of the cell. And previously, no one had really looked at using techniques like this to explore what's happening on the outer envelope or the outermost regions of a cell. And so we started looking at this uh, shortly after I joined MIT, and it's interesting because we found, with, particularly with single-celled organisms, they do a lot of interesting things on their outer cell surface. So if you think of a single-celled organism like bacteria, so us, we have eyes and ears and arms and legs, and that's how we interact with the environment. But a cell just has this outer envelope, so it has to be its eyes and ears and arms and legs. And so these cells tell you a lot about themselves based on what's on their outer envelope. And we've devised ways of using dielectrophoresis to non-invasively, so without killing or um, for, or doing much damage to the cells to probe what's happening on the outer envelope. And so that's one thing where we've taken something that's a little bit old. This dielectrophoresis was first, um, first demonstrated in the 60s um, and hadn't found a lot of practical applications. So we've kind of taken it and with a new twist looked at problems that are very relevant today, mainly um, pathogens or, or bacteria that cause disease. And it just so happens that a lot of these things do interesting things on their outer cellular envelope and 
our flavor of dialect allows us some insight into that.